In this video, I'm going to be going over what is blocking in statistics. So the first thing to know in blocking is that it's part of the design of experiments. It's what you do in preparation for how you're going to approach the experiment that you're doing. There's a saying that when, when you block, that you block what you can and you randomize what you cannot. And so what does that mean? That means that when you're looking at the variables that may or may not be within your, your study, you're making sure that you're setting aside what needs to be set aside or grouping what needs to be grouped before you start analyzing and collecting data. And so that's very important because when you don't do that, you may find out or be in a situation that your data is suggesting something that it's not. And this helps you with discerning what is making influence on whatever you're trying to do. It's important to understand that when you do blocking in an experiment, you randomly assign individuals to treatments to control for the effects of any potential potential variables out there, confounding or lurking variables. So it depends on, on, on your, your vernacular. But what you're trying to do with blocking is removing the noise to make sure that when the test happens, when the experiment happens, that your end result will be accurate. And I'll give you an example. So say we want to use a explanatory variable of a new diet and we want to see whether or not that new diet results in weight loss. Now a confounding variable or a nuisance variable may be sex and gender. In fact, we know it's sex and gender because this, is, this type of study has been done several times where um, basically depending on your sex, the influence of the new diet will vary. <clears throat> but that's not the focus of the study. The focus of the study is to look at whether or not the new diet is what causes the weight loss, not whether or not sex or gender causes the weight loss. That's a secondary thing. That's a secondary question. However, you still need the block there because the block accounts for variations between the sexes. So the focus isn't the sex or gender, the focus is the diet. Now, how would you apply this in an experiment? So you would ex apply this in an experiment where you're having men separated into two groups, new diet and normal diet or a standard diet, and then women into two groups, a new diet or a standard diet. And then you compare at the end, given the results. And what you're doing there is you're applying the blocking, which is of course the sex or gender, but then on top of that, you're also applying the randomization within those set within the setup. Uh, randomization doesn't go away. You still need to apply that somewhere. And I think in, in, in this example, you're applying it on the level of sex, uh, but only because it's a nuisance variable. It's a confounding variable. If you don't apply, if you don't apply that, you're not going to get accurate results with how you understand the model. What are other examples? Another example is like an age or an age range. So you look at a common age range is like, you know, 25 to 34, 35 to 45, you know, like stuff like that, where you're you're comparing based off age because as we know in certain medical aspects, age influences certain biological structures in the body. Uh, another example is region. So, uh, you know, I live in Michigan in the United States. So Michigan in the United States is in the north. Uh, we have four seasons. And because we have four seasons, if you're going to do something comparing maybe how we eat or how we uh, react to sunlight compared to someone in the south, say in Florida, you're going to want to take that into account. Uh, another example is income level, which I think most people will just understand, like, depending on your income level, you have different things that you account for because you're at a different income level. Again, these are things that are not the focus of what you're analyzing. These are secondary because just like with the example, the focus is the new diet. Does the new diet work, yes or no? At the end of the day, that's the question. And sex and gender is there 
to complement the explanatory variable, not to explain the explanatory variable. It's not in and of itself something that is going to explain what's going on. It's there to help answer the question. And it's there to help it in such a way where it's reducing the noise. So you're, you're not allowing the variation to if essentially run rampant by just doing a random sample of people and not taking into account certain factors that will actually influence what's being analyzed. And at the end of the day, that's what blocking is really about. It's about making sure that you're accounting for what needs to be accounted for naturally, given whatever you're experimenting on, and then going from there. If you found these to be helpful, please like and subscribe. I will be doing another video on stratifying to complement the video on blocking versus stratification because a lot of people get those two mixed up. Uh, if you have any questions on this, please leave a comment in the comment section uh, or send it to my email at learn2tostats at gmail.com. Uh, thank you for watching and stay nerdy, my friends.